That's what I thought when I first saw Luis, too. I thought. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. What? He looks so confused. Why are you confused? Isn't it, isn't it New Year's Day? Are you sure? Are you positive? How many of you think it's New Year's Day today? Okay, let's look out there. How many of them think it's a New Year? Look at all those hands. Why do you think they think it's a New Year? It's the first Sunday of Advent. What's your name? Sean. I'm Jared. Pleasure to meet you. You win the first correct question of the day award. There are no prizes, though. I'm so sorry. It's remarkably disappointing. It's like being a Christian, your prize is just doing good things. Um, <laughs> so it's the beginning of a new year. It's the first Sunday of Advent. That's why we have this lovely blue on, which is a symbol of kind of the night. Have you, ever, have you ever been awake before the sun comes up? Yeah? It, it, and you know how the, how the sky is kind of this really kind of beautiful blue color as the sun's beginning to come up, and, and then the sun comes up and it bursts into color. It's really beautiful and exciting, right? Yeah, it's great. I see a lot of that now because I just had a baby. Uh, <laughs> though, though I have to be honest because Bethany, my wife, is here, and so I can't, like, lie. Because <laughs> she will correct me. I mean, not like I'd lie anyways. <laughs> Wait a second. This whole sermon is going off kilter right off the bat. Uh, Bethany probably sees many more <laughs> dogs than I do. When our baby, Lucy, wakes up, my job is to go get Lucy and to change her and to bring her to Bethany. And then what my job is after that is not clearly defined. <laughs> Sometimes it's to stay awake with her. Sometimes I secretly put my phone down and go back to sleep. Uh, it's a real secret. I'm sure she's totally fooled by it. Um, I just don't know. Um, and so what this means, with a little bit of let's sleep, is one of my great phobias is getting bigger. I'm, I'm, do, you want, do you know what a phobia is? Something you're scared of, right? Are you scared yeah. of anything? What are you scared of? Um, I hate spiders. Spiders. Yes. Take that from yeah, what are you scared of? Tornadoes. Tornadoes, okay. Heights. Heights. Toilet paper. I don't know the one. Toilet paper. <laughs> I'm going to let you and your mom work that one. You got another one? Sharks. Sharks? Sharks? Are anyone else scared of anything? Are you scared of something, Sean? What are you scared of? The dark and spiders. The dark and spiders. Well, let me think. What I'm afraid of is sleeping in on Sunday morning. Because <laughs> it's awkward when the priest doesn't show up. <laughs> And so sometimes, like, Saturday nights are scary nights for me. I set, like, sometimes I set, like, double alarm clocks. Have you ever done that? Set more than one alarm clock? You, you all ever do that? Set, like, the double alarm clock because you're really scared? So the thing is, it's a phobia. It, it, I've actually done it uh, twice. Once, when I was just after I've been ordained a priest, the church I used to work at had an early morning service, an early morning Eucharist, on Wednesdays at 7.30 in the morning. I had to be at work at 7.30 in the morning. That's just some kind of cruel. Um, and so I absolutely slept through it one Wednesday and showed up and was very apologetic. I was a very bad priest. Uh, but they forgave me, they're really nice. Um, and then I actually did it once at St. John's. Um, I, I woke up, um, I, I talked about this at the early service and the usher that was there that day was actually in the service. He remembered me running into the church five minutes before the service was supposed to start my hair kind of askew, um, like, I've got this, it's okay, I'm, I'm all under control. Um, so I'm pretty afraid of that, um, and I, last night when I went to bed, I was a little afraid of that. And it's funny, because when I did do that, it happened in Advent, uh, which is fitting, because the theme, as we probably heard in the readings today, is wake up, <laughs> right? And I feel like the Advent readings today are telling me, you know, set that double alarm clock, wake up. So, the reason we're supposed to wake up is because Jesus is coming, right? We're all excited about that. Coming, of course, on Christmas, we celebrate the coming of Christ in Bethlehem. The Advent is also about preparing for the coming of Christ at the end of the world, when Christ will come again, and preparing for the coming of Christ within us, because Christ comes within us regularly, all the time. So we're making room for that, and you've got to wake up. Wake up. I know it's, it's hard. It's a sermon, but try to wake up. Wake up. Are you awake? Excellent. Okay. So in the epistle reading for today, 
Paul is telling the Roman Christians that they need to wake up. Now, how many of you know where Rome is? Where, where's Rome? Italy. Italy. Excellent. It's in Italy, uh, kind of in the middle of the boot. You can you know, Italy looks like a boot. Uh, so it's kind of there. Uh, and, uh, and the Roman Christians had been fighting. Uh, do, do you ever, have you ever known Christians to fight? Yeah. Really? You see this? When? That's, that's absolutely, that's logically sound. Um, and sometimes, you know, we're just coming off of a holiday, right, Thanksgiving, and sometimes Thanksgiving, depending on what your family's like, there might be some fighting that happens. I don't know. My, my family never fights. That's not true. Uh, I'm apparently full of deceit today. This is why I need to wake up and stop lying to you as you priest. Um, so the Roman Christians were fighting because what had happened is they'd been persecuted, so the government had been kind of telling them you can't be Christian anymore, and so they had to flee Rome. And during that time, new Christians, because the church is always adding new Christians, right? So new Christians joined the church who were Gentiles. The Christians that left had been Jewish Christians, and the Gentile Christians came, and then the persecution subsided. And so the other Christians came back and came into church and discovered someone was sitting in their seat. <gasps> And it's like what? It's like lunch, right? You go into the lunch and sitting in your seat. Has you ever happened to you at church where you've come to your normal seat and someone's in your seat? Yes? It's a little, it's, it, no? It's never happened to you? It's because you're always welcoming, right? Every guest. So anyway, so they've been this fighting. In, the, in these two types of Christians, they were different. They had different rules, different ways of doing things. Some of them maybe wore blue in Advent, others wore purple in Advent. They were just different Christians, so they're arguing about it with each other. And so the whole book of Romans is Paul telling the church in Rome to wake up. Um, that there's much more that needs to happen in this world than you just fighting with each other. Um, and, and, and particularly because the government is still, there's still tension there because the government and the church don't always get along. And so the whole section before the reading today is kind of Paul telling them how to deal with that. And then he tells them in this reading, wake up. Wake up and go out to do good in the world. Um, you need to wake up and you need to be kind of like a superhero, maybe. Maybe you're called to be a superhero. Maybe the best superhero that exists ever in the history of superheroes. Do you know who my favorite superhero is? Batman. Batman. So I've got my Batman socks on right now. These are Advent Batman socks because they're blue. You like that? Nail it. Uh, so Batman uh, is my favorite superhero, and Batman uh, gets up in the middle of the night and goes out and fights evil, and that's kind of your job as Christians. But there's a problem with this. Everyone wants to be that person, right? You want to go do good things in the world, don't you? Don't you want to go out and do good things in the world? Don't you want to go out and kind of be Batman and like do good things and break down injustice and do great things? Everyone wants to do that. The problem is, is what we tend to do is we wake up but we weren't prepared to wake up, and so we run out to do good in the world without getting dressed. We run around in our pajamas, um, which is kind of what Batman's actually doing. Um, doesn't it look a little like pajamas? In the old Batman, maybe. The new Batman is not pajamas. I don't sleep in, like, those kind of pajamas. Well, some days. But um, we're going to field again. Um, so Batman... So you got... You got to get dressed. And this is what Paul is saying in Romans. He's saying get dressed. And do you know how Paul tells him to get dressed? He uses this image. He doesn't, I mean, I'm not making this up. This was in the reading, right? Paul said, clothe yourselves with the armor of light. He tells them, and the way to do that is by paying attention to the second great commandment. Remember at the beginning of the service, we heard the first great commandment is what? Love who? Who do you think is most important to love? Yourself close. God. We love God. And the second is like unto it, which is to love who? Your neighbors as yourself. These are well formed children. Uh, uh, to love your neighbor as yourself. So, so he tells the, the Romans, he says, so what you need to do is you need to take off all of your 
kind of sinfulness that you do. All the ways that you don't love your neighbor well. Things like licentiousness. Do you know what licentiousness is? Uh, something bad, I'm guessing. I actually don't know either. I was hoping you did. <laughs> but the, what I want to focus on is the last two things he tells them to let go of in order to get dressed. And that is quarreling and jealousy. So quarreling we already heard about, right? When he said, you know, the Romans need to stop fighting because there's important things to do in this world. And what you and I do is we go out into the world to do good, but we don't get dressed first. And so we wind up trying to do good, but actually attacking one another and fighting and being cruel and being mean. Or we, we, we think that we're going to go out and do good in the world when before we left our home we were mean to our sister or to our mom. Or we were mean to another Christian. Or we were cruel or hurtful. And we think that we're going to go out and do good in the world when we haven't been willing first to look at ourselves. And to make ourselves ready to do good in the world. That's what it means to go out into the world without getting dressed. And this is what we do as Christians. We run out into the world convinced that we're going to do good, but we don't first look at ourselves. So you need to let go of quarreling. Because you can't love your neighbor and fight with your neighbor at the same time. You can disagree with your neighbor. You can tell your neighbor you believe your neighbor is wrong. You can tell your neighbor you believe that they need to do something differently. But if you can't love your neighbor first, you're not doing it the way Jesus wants us to do it. You've always got to be, even when it's so hard, do you have people in your life that are hard to love? Yeah? Don't point at your sister, that's cheating. <laughs> we all have people, right, that are a little hard to love. If you want to do good in the world, like we need to do, if Christ is going to come again in us, which is what Advent's all about, you've got to be willing to look at those people and to love them. Not to quarrel with them, but to love them. And the second thing is we need to let go of jealousy. Because that's what a lot of our fighting comes down to. Is that we're upset because someone has something that we want. And I know you probably think that maybe you get to be an adult and you get over this. Right? Um, adults, do you, do, you, do you still get jealous, see something someone else has and want it? Right? Raise your hand if you, ever, if you ever still get jealous in the world, right? We all, we all, all do that. But if we want to get dressed to go out into the world, to help Christ come into the world, we've got to let go of that. We've got to know that we have enough. Because what we do is we think that, well, I'll go out and I'll be friends with this person who has no friends. Um, but first I want to make sure I have enough friends. But that's not how it works. The first thing you do is you let go of that need to have more. And you give. That's why you become a people of abundance. Or we think, well, maybe I'll, maybe I'll you know, go out and I'll work for justice in the world. But it's got to be fair with me first. Because my life's not fair. So maybe I'll, I'll go out and try to make things fair for others. But I want it fair for me first. That's not the way it works. You've got to be willing to give first before you're going to get. We all have to do that. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe we think, you know, maybe I'll give uh, to the church. Maybe I'll increase my pledge. Once I have enough money. Let me tell you a little secret. You're never going to have enough money. You're not. You're never going to have enough toys. You're never going to have enough clothes. At least not enough if you live in a world like the world we live in. A world of jealousy. But the truth is, you've already got enough. We've all got enough. We exist in a place that we are loved. We have families that love us. We exist in a church where we are loved. We have clothing for today. Jesus tells us that if we want to follow him, that he will take care of us. He says, look at the birds of the air. They don't worry, and they're fed. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't worry how beautiful they are. So you know what Jesus is saying? That if you follow God, you're going to eat like a bird. And dress like a flower. That's not about having a massive amount. It's about having enough. Having enough so that we'll be people that go out and that give first. So, this is your charge in this season of Advent. Wake up. But don't just wake up. Get dressed. Let go of the desire to win. Choose to love. Find the person in your life, who you don't always really like to love, and choose during this season to love that person. Think of that thing you really, really, really want, that you want before you're going to give, and let go of that want. 
Instead, look to someone who needs and give to them. Give to them, knowing that we all, we all have enough. And if we all would believe that, then this world would indeed be a place where Jesus would be very, very, very well known in his church. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Thank you.